right, seventh grade, this is 470 through 476 ecology. And sometimes people think of ecology, they think of like um, tree huggers or something like that. But I find it fascinating and I find it important in um, our lives as Christians to maintain what the Lord has allowed us to have. He gives us these beautiful things. We are supposed to take care of them. Um, now, he also gives us these things for our use. And that's where we kind of differ from um, some of what they would call tree huggers. All right. We want to use these things that God's allowed us to have, but then to replenish them and renew them and make sure that we leave enough for um, our neighbors or um, leave some for our children, that kind of thing. So um, all those things are, are important. So ecology is the study of how living things interact with each other, animals, plants, insects, sunshine, you name it, whatever, it's how they all, everything interacts. Every organism is basically the bottom of the biome that we talk about. And an organism is just one single living thing, one single deer out there in the woods, one single raccoon getting in your trash at night, one single cat that is straying around the backyard. Um, that is one single organism, one single plant, uh, one single insect. That's what we're talking about when we talk about an organism. Each organism, they have their own habitats and they have their own niche. And their niche is their occupation or what their purpose is, basically. All right. So um, an organism's niche is its um, purpose and its environment, includes its lifestyle, its habitat, its role, its relationship with others, um, that kind of thing. You know, um, a... Um, a, a bird of prey, it's neat, just going to be to hunt, you know, something along those lines. And some of them are easy to pinpoint, some of them not as much. But uh, we have the, together all of these things in their environments make up the ecosystem. And the ecosystem, um, because influences in an ecosystem can change, ecosystems themselves can change. And so ecosystem is the broadest spectrum that we're going to be talking about when we talk about ecology here. Influences um, in an ecosystem will be divided into two groups. The influences would be biotic, and you can tell what that means because you know what bio means life, exactly. And so biotic factors are always living factors, a plant, an insect, a person, a animal, an animal, whatever. That is a biotic factor. Um, Abiotic factors, remember A meaning no or not, non-living non things, so rock, soil, water, those are abiotic factors that are in an environment there. Um, even radiation or the sun would be considered an abiotic factor, temperature, that kind of stuff. So an organism lives in what we call a tolerance range. So some and different organisms have different tolerance ranges. So um, the white-tailed deer may, will have a different tolerance range than um, a toucan, <laughs> right? A toucan bird, a uh, tropical bird. All right, so the tropical bird may live in degree, maybe somewhere from 50 to 60 degrees up to 90 or 100 degrees. That would be um, its tolerance range. But its optimum range is what it thrives in, what it prefers the most. So that might be 70 to 90 or 80 to 90. You know, it's a smaller range. So tolerance range, what it can tolerate. Um, and optimum range, what it likes the best um, as far as any type of um, thing within its environment. But you think of temperature because that's, that's fairly easy um, there to be able to to use as an example. Um, you know, domestic dog, cat, something like that might be able to survive in the winter outside, um, but its optimum range, its ideal range, would be um, not as cold, right? And just ask any of your pets. All right, so um, whatever is the, whatever is the, um, the, when we're talking about tolerance range, you go to optimum range. Whatever is that, the factor that limits its existence is called the limiting factor. It's kind of common sense that's um, harder to break down even more. But whatever threatens its survival, that is its limiting factor. So 
It may be uh, freezing temperatures. Um, it could be um, like living in without um, grass or without meat or whatever. You, it just depends on maybe it's too hot a temperature. Um, that would be its limiting factor there. And you go over to 474 and you're looking at an ecosystem all together and you look at um, some different things there. First of all, you look at their carrying capacity. And um, its carrying capacity basically means the population of a species in um, that ecosystem and basically what it can carry. So um, if you look at the forest beside of my house, um, the carrying capacity of white-tailed deer could be, let's say, 100. But let's say it's 100, all right, for, for that forest. Um, so they're going to kind of keep tabs on that forest and make sure that it doesn't reach over that carrying capacity um, because they want to have that optimum range there of, um, you know, maybe anywhere from 70 to 100 white-tailed deer in that area. Um, one of the reasons that hunting is promoted is because white-tailed deer, um, they would overtake the place if we didn't hunt them to a certain extent. Um, you don't want that to happen, of course. And, um, of course, I do believe if you're going to hunt, you got to eat what you hunt for. Or, um, like my husband has donated to Hunters Feeding the Hungry, you know, if, if we had what we wanted as far as um, as far as the the deer meat that we want um, but but we eat it and um, basically free meat and it's really good for you so um, and he enjoys being out in the woods and doing all that and I know a lot of you all do as well so the carrying capacity is um, basically how many or the maximum amount of a number of a specific species that that ecosystem can support. So um, it, it may be a thousand trees or the numbers would be much greater, honestly, in, in these types of things. But for our minds, that's what I'm thinking of is, is like a thousand trees. Um, so the number and variety of species that live within an environment, that's called biodiversity. And again, breaking down that word, diversity means differences and bio meaning life. So the differences in the type of life that live in that ecosystem is known as its biodiversity. And um, all organisms are kind of interconnected somehow as far as, um, you know, maybe in the food chain, maybe just um, where they live, walking by each other and that kind of thing. Um, if you have overpopulation, that can become a big problem because overpopulation means that they're competing for uh, the same resources, um, same food, same water and all of that. And that never is um, very good there. And of course, um, all of it can change depending on the weather and, and that kind of thing. All right, let's look at biogeochemical cycles on page 475. These are cycles found within the ecosystem and bio meaning life, geo meaning the world or earth, chemical. Chemicals aren't always bad. Um, sometimes people are like, oh, it has chemicals in it. I'm thinking, well, we would consider, you know, potassium and, and other things chemicals. So um, not always a bad thing, but sometimes it is. Um, so biogeochemical cycles. And so we have several different kinds that we're talking about here. Um, the hydrologic cycle, hydro meaning water. And so that's the water cycle, all right? So um, evaporation from the plants and the earth and the oceans and seas and lakes and rivers and evaporation comes up and then we have condensation they forms cloud that forms clouds and then um, precipitation and it all comes back down to the earth and that just continues on and on and on and on and um, that's of course the way God intended us to be able to use that. Atmospheric cycles involve recycling nutrients found in gaseous form, and that would not just be oxygen carbon dioxide. Like we breathe out oxygen, we breathe out carbon dioxide, and we breathe in oxygen. Plants 
breathe out oxygen and need carbon dioxide. So of course that didn't just happen by chance. God made that in his wisdom for us to be able to need each other and to be able to um, benefit from each other there. And that's um, an atmospheric cycle. There's also nitrogen, which is an atmospheric cycle kind of mixed with a sedimentary cycle. And that brings us to the next one, which would be sedimentary cycle, uh, phosphorus, um, potassium, things along those lines, um, that when animals die, they put it down back into the soil, and then we will get those nutrients back up in our vegetables or plants or other things that animals will eat or we will eat, um, and so on and so forth. So those are just cycles that continually are cycling in our environments, biogeochemical cycles. All right, so that was an easy one as well. Word 70 to 476, make sure you do that section review. And um, I will see you for your last.